Hello and welcome to another Pixel Game Maker tutorial. Today we're going to do weather effects. It's going to be pretty simple to set them up. We're going to be using the particle system for this. And with that said, let's get started. All right, so here we are in our scene. We're going to make it rain in the desert. It's going to be awesome. All right, so we're going to go to objects here. We're going to use a similar method that we did for the HUD transparency, which is where we attach it to the camera and then we're going to make the particles show the weather. And so just simply to do that, I'm going to create another one. I'm going to call it our weather system or just weather. That's fine. Make it a neutral. I'm going to get rid of all the detections for it. And we don't even need to attach an animation to it. We can just go like this. And the first thing that we want it to do is the same thing that we wanted it to do in, in this one, which is we wanted it to move to the center of the camera first thing. All right, so move to camera. And then the next thing is, is this is where you're gonna have like your process weather. And we'll remove that. And then you're gonna have your different types of weather. You're gonna have your rain. I think we can do snow as well. And we'll just do rain and snow for right now because those make sense in the desert, right? And so we'll just do rain first. So I'm just going to attach it right here. Now, the only thing about this object that we have to do is we need to set it to fix relative position to camera. And that should be all that we need to do to set up this object. So I'm going to go to scenes and I'm just going to put in the weather object and it doesn't matter where. Uh, you, you can give it an icon if you want. So I'll just place it right there. And now we're going to set up the rain weather. So we're going to go to animations we're going to add an animation and it's going to be a particle. And right here, it has some default uh, particles to choose from. And so I'm going to click on the rain. I think that's what I said I was going to do first. So yeah, the rain, and then we're going to click OK. All right, so if we zoom out, we can see that the space of the rain is going to happen in this red square. We can see that a scene size is this gray square. So if we want the rain to look like it's raining on the whole scene, then we want to make this this red area bigger because right now and i guess i could just show you here so if we go to object and we go to rain we can call a particle show particles and we can say the rain particle and we'll just say center of object and we'll say no time limit if we click ok and when we play test here it will show rain and you can see that it's only in this red area now it's going a little bit down because the lifetime of the particle is is lasting. But you can see that it's only in this area. It's also a little small. So let's adjust a few things here. And real quick, I just wanted to point out because I, I just copy pasted this but what's happening here is that it's going to the center of the scene coordinate. And since my resolution is 1280 by 720, I'm going to split that in half. So 640 by 360. And then I'm clicking coordinates are display area based and that puts it right in the camera. Okay, so now let's go to the rain particles. So what we need to do first is change this variation. Instead of a 320 by 240, we're going to change it to our resolution size. Oops. So 1280 by 720. Now you can see I was actually wrong the gray square isn't representing a scene size. But the uh, so we need it to be the scene size, which now we have it. And so now if we were to play test this, we would see that the rain is now going over the whole screen. Now we still can't really see the rain. So we've got some options here. First, we can give the amount of rain particles that will be shown. And do note that it is pre-generated. So that's it starts with rain on the scene. If you didn't do this, then they would just start slowly filtering in. So pre-generating is nice here. Looping is nice here. I'm not going to go into all the settings because there are some tutorials going over uh, the particle system. But these are the ones that you'll need for the weather specifically. Uh, here you can change the direction of the movement of the rain. So you could have a couple rain, one that moves this way, one that moves the other way. And then you could have which way the wind's blowing. Um, you would play the different rains or whatever. And the another important thing is the size so the starting size we're going to let's triple this just so we can see here 
and since they were pretty consistent the raindrop stayed about the same i'm just going to make the ending size 21 as well so now if we play they're going to be a little bigger we could probably be able to see them yeah so there they are a little bigger you can see that they are kind of doing some transparency things so they're over here you can see the end the opacity is dropping out so we can just move that back up this is the lifetime of the color basically so it's going to start in this color middle of it it's going to go to this and then the ending is going to have this so if we uh, play test with this now we won't have that fading out motion although it still does look like it is but let's just say that we wanted the water to be blue right instead of changing different colors so let's see how it would look if it's all blue and the opacity is all set correctly so let's see how that would look all right so yeah now you got these more bigger drops here now you can see some of them are ending some of them are starting at at different times this is where you can adjust the lifetime right here and and stuff like this and then down here you can actually choose a particle so right now the default particle is like this little raindrop thing uh, if you wanted a more pixelated uh, raindrop you can just choose this uh, pixel square and these might be too big of a pixel so you might want to add your own which you can you can click add here and it will add your own and so you could also have a circle drop uh, you can also do addition mode uh, this will just add oh i know why the colors are a little off yeah you can't even see them with the addition that's funny there so now we got blue 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 Oh, I got the addition mode there. Now let's add some more just so we could see what that looks like. So I'll add 200 rain. All right, and there we go. So we got a nice rain system. Now the cool thing is, is that you can see that because it's fixed on camera, you can see that it follows the camera and it looks like it's just consistently raining. And it's pretty good about maintaining its position as you're walking around. Uh, we can also do something like increase the lifetime. So we can increase the lifetime to say 0.15 second. And we'll see if that does. Some of these you just got to play. No, so it might be duration that I'm thinking of. So we could go to duration here. And we could change this variation here. We could go to duration and put 1.5 as well. And there you go. So that, that's how you can add some rain. All right, so let's go and add some snow real quick. You just particles, click snow, click OK. Change the screen size to 1280 by 720. And then we're just going to see how it looks out the box. So I'm going to change this one to snow now. And then I'll just copy this, paste it and we'll show the snow and we'll see how that looks just right out the bat can't really see it so let's start changing some things here so the first thing is, is i want to make it like this i want to change the opacity i want to really be able to see the snow so let's see if that changes it a little bit okay so yeah already a lot better so the one thing is we need a lot more snow in our desert. So we're going to up this to, well, let's make it really, really snowy. Again, we got pre-generate on. Now pre-generate you don't want on all your particles, but on weather, I think it's, it's, it's pretty important too. And you could also see how you can position this to have like a front area of say fog or leaves blowing in by changing the direction. So if we, let's see here, I changed it to 400. So let's see what 400 gives us. Okay, yeah, so it's definitely a little more snowy. And we could increase the lifetime here and the duration. And there, there's just all these different settings that you can just check and keep playing with until you figure out what works best for your situation now this is one method on how to place it 
you could also do this. So right now I just used it on the normal scene, right? So I could actually delete this and we could go to the menu scene right here. And on our gameplay HUD, I could actually add the weather object right here. And I'm going to place it six by 720 or is that right? No, no, 360. And now if I was to play, I would get the same effect, except for the only thing about this is now it's actually covering my, my uh, HUD. So now it's going over the HUD. So you have some options, basically, you can have it to where it follows the menu, or you can have it and that that's kind of an interesting effect too. when you're moving up, it, it's falling slower than than when you move up. So I don't remember it doing that with fixed uh, camera. So maybe there is a, a reason you would use both. But this is a nice one if you just want it to go over your HUD. Again, side view projects, you won't have to worry about this kind of thing right here. You'll just have to worry about the side views. All right, so the last thing to just touch on real quick is how you would get it to switch. So for instance, we could have rain and then we'll have just a processing. Now, to process this the easiest, I would just suggest using a, a variable. And we could just simply call this weather. And we could say something like one equals rain, two equals snow, and zero equals none. And we'll also go that the default value will be zero. All right, so now we have our little check. And we can say the uh, common weather when it's equal to one, when it's equal to, there we go. And then we can have a check back that says when it's not equal to one. And then we can have a check to snow. I'm just copy pasting these links, by the way, when it's equal to two. And then copy paste, and this will be when it's not equal to two. And so that'll be our simple check there. Now for the uh, processing here, we can simply just say hide particles and we can say all particles set by this object. So it's going to hide all particles and then it's going to go to the new one. So this one would be rain, this one would be snow. And so real quickly, if we just based on this weather variable here, if we go to play and we hit F1 and go to common variables. And we go down to weather. Got to find it here first. There we go. And if I click one, it should start raining. And then if I click two, it should process to snow. And then if I go back to one, it will rain. And then two or zero would be nothing. And this is where I was saying you could get some different variations. So let's just say that uh, you wanted rain left, which I think is what it, its default is. And then we could have like a rain right. And this link would be if it's equal to uh, 1.1, we'll just say for some random reason. And this is if it's not equal to 1.1. And then we'll just simply copy paste the rain. And this will be the rain. Uh, I'll just leave it like the name rain one. But instead of going that way, it's going to be moving this way. And then we will change this to rain one. And we'll play test again. And in the weather, it'll go to one. And then when you put a value of 1.1, it's going to change it to the right facing. So that's what I was saying by you could have different uh, moving weather patterns. And so yeah, with a, a system like that, the, the only thing that I'm that I won't show is where you would change it because that could vary that could be a time system that you have that could be the uh, an object you interact with, all you would have to do is change the 
weather variable and then it would react to it. Anyway, I hope this tutorial was helpful. If you need any help, go to the Steam forums, the Discord will get you figured out. That said, we'll see you at the next video. Thank you.